This episode is brought to you by the Cloth Filter Company, who hand sew reusable coffee filters for all your favorite pour over and batch brew devices. Save trees, save money, make delicious coffee. I use them almost every day, so check the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward Friends. This is the last, sadly, of a five part episode with Abby Munoz from Monarch Coffee. Abby, this has been a really insightful conversation so far. I know you and I talk regularly, but I. I learned stuff on this podcast that I didn't know about you. So it's been a delight. In this conversation, we're going to talk about the future though. And in our conversations during our coaching sessions, we've been heavily focusing on like, how do we prepare for some of the choppy things that are ahead? And what I'd like to kind of focus on is what's important to you to be prepared for in the future. What are some oh, of the man. things that concern you? Yeah, I mean, I hate, I, I, you know what concerns me is that we're even, like, I'm not a doomsday kind of person, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think you and I talked one day about something about, oh, F, this, you know, Russia thing. And I was like, Lee, what are you talking about? Like, I was completely oblivious, right? I choose to keep my mind, to enrich my mind with things that are enriching, right? And what is happening in the world and the government and all of the other things that become very religious or political or whatever it is. Um, I choose to be very selective of what gets fed Mm -hmm. to me and keep those thoughts and opinions very guarded. Mm -hmm. So I hate to be a doomsday person, right? Like I'm a half full gal. um, And it can be stressful sometimes. Yeah. But right. Like, <laughs> but what I'm, I get overwhelmed really easily, which is like, duh, you know, being an A type A personality and high D and perfectionist with all the other things. But I, the things that I am worried about or concerned about is like the customer acquisition planning. I feel like it's constantly a pivot and a move. Especially right? and now. do we have do we have it right? Um, uh, we are growing. We are seeing visitors coming to Hawaii. Yeah, they're spending money differently, but they still want an experience, and mm. I want them to get to have just a taste of what it's like to get because it is a privilege to get to live and be on this island mm. and to be a part of the community and to get to wake up every day and go to work on a coffee farm with, I mean, my views from the office never, as Sal says, they never disappoint. So how do I continue to be able to offer and share that beauty Mm. at a price point where I can still run and operate my business? Mm. Um, where do I, this rising, I like that we're getting, we're like the best farm to visit in Hawaii, but I need to be thinking about, uh, more employees. Where are they going to come from? How am I going to be able to afford their wages? Um, where are the customers? How do, where, where is, where do I grow? Where do we go? You know, um, am I, do I, where, you know, our, our marketing funds are limited because we are a small business. So how are those dollars spent? Where's my wisest use of of those dollars and the analyzation of that information is exhausting exhausting. (laughs) and it takes me away from the things that I'm really good at and passionate about right Mm -hmm. and that is sitting with my neck hurting really bad over a table like this hand grading green coffee samples yep to sending it to some really excited coffee roasters in some really cool places Mm. right Mm. or getting to tweak roast profiles or blend coffees or Ho- host someone at, for a roasting tour 
um, do a pour over and get to sit and talk story and share thoughts and ideas with like-minded people, you know, get to go on the road and visit cafes and see all the things that happens in that, you know, I mean, those are the visit other producers last, last spring, we did a trip to the central coast, um, to visit our friends at French coffee. And it just was so refreshing. You know, I mean, also another producer who's doing innovative, crazy things in California where everybody said, California, you can't grow coffee. People right. said we couldn't grow gas shot in Hawaii. Like, don't tell me that. Cause the moment you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to prove you wrong. So those are the things that I like in the challenges that I'm looking at for 2023 and is how to overcome the like just the obstacles of this economy and continue to provide an experience and delicious coffee to those who who are looking for that coffee right like the coffee that is going to be nostalgic and take you to some place you know take you back to your hawaiian vacation or remind you of your Christmas morning coffee with your grandma. Sal's mom every Christmas day made coffee with like, a, she opened a can of sweetened condensed milk and she made oh, coffee yum. in a bun coffee maker and it like sat there all day and then she'd like just put the pot in the refrigerator and then the next day like microwave <laughs> it. I, I This is a place where I will be a gatekeeper. That's probably not the best way to drink coffee. Perhaps not. All other methods all but. other methods you're on your own but they and she like they like I swear she counted how many times she stirred the coffee clockwise and then counterclockwise yeah. and then like picked up the cup and like tapped it three times like there was a whole like ritual, ritual. thing and which is the exciting kid, part about it yeah and or you know people who want to experience the whole part of coffee or people who just, you know, I have a really special place for in my heart for, you know, I think one of your listeners or somebody said something about the job that coffee does for us. And one of them is just to caffeinate. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about it and think about all the people in my in the life. And I have someone super dear to me who is um, in recovery. And it's amazing. And then I think about how coffee is such an intricate part of people overcoming alcohol addiction. Mm. Like if you go to an AA meeting or they meet like, I, and I don't mean to turn this into that. Um, but I think my point is that coffee like is doing something for each of us every day. And I want to continue to be able to create this coffee for the job that you're asking coffee to do. You raise a really great point because we're going into, well, we already are in some challenging times coming off the back of some challenging times. And there are going to be people who are more financially squeezed than others. And coffee is the staple in a lot of people's lives. And for some people, it's going to become a luxury, but it will be an affordable luxury. And I guess the problem we need to solve as an industry and as individual business owners is how do I find the customer who's looking for what I've got to offer so that what I do have to offer helps them get through this? Yes. How can it be the hug that they're looking for regardless or in spite of the challenging times ahead? Right. Think of a coffee how many conversations I think about in my life, uh, we had a late in life baby and those are OF moments, right? You're like, yeah. oh, fuck, how do I tell my parents I'm pregnant? I was 37 years old. Like I shouldn't have been worried about telling my parents. I was married. <laughs> like there's nothing shameful about it, right? But I remember Sal and I sitting at, in, our, uh, nug in our cafe in the Nugget in the grocery store and just like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Right. Just like cup after cup of coffee, right? How many divorces are marriages are, you know, finalized or settled or repaired over coffee? 
how many parent teacher conferences. We got the news that our son was autistic and we were sitting in a cafe and it was like, okay, what else can we do? You know? Right. Yeah. So on top of being a producer and all these other things, I'm also a homeschool mom of a, a child on the spectrum. Um, so coffee, there's so many conversations that are had over that or a hot beverage, you know, hot tea or something. Right. And, and it makes those conversations while they might be hard. It makes them special. <laughs> it makes them memorable. It makes them, it makes them just the thing that I think is going to be what everybody needs during the repair. Yeah. And, and this support. is where I get really excited for people who do own coffee, small businesses in challenging times. Cause you, you, I mean, anyone who works with me or listens to this podcast is sick of me saying, but I'm going to say it again, find problems that need to be solved and solve them for your customers. And this is a problem that's going to need to be solved. How do I feel good at a time that feels really shit? And as long as your coffee doesn't bitch back at you, that's the one good thing that went right today. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you make that experience for your consumer land? I feel like I know how to make it land. The Like I'm pushing and they're pulling or, you know, like, I feel like it's like the it needs doors. to connect. They're missing yeah. each other. And, and that's so what we're that, working on. Yeah. P- people yeah, but, think that this idea of finding your customer is like super easy, build it and they will come. Mm-hmm. It's just not that way. Your, your consumer is out there, but there's a difference between who you want. And this is not you. I'm saying in the greater you, um, as a business who owner. Who, yeah, who your consumer is is very different than who you want that consumer to be. Mm-hmm. Right. And the time is different. Like two, even in the in the height of the pandemic, it was challenging and everything. But people were just like, Well, hell's bells, like I have nothing else to do. Let me just right. like and I felt that. We saw that, you know. Yep. Um and and fill your cart, fill your wagon. And, um, but you know, I, I really, this isn't about just selling coffee. It's about connecting with people. Yeah. And like you said, creating that hug that everyone, we all need it, whether we want to admit it or not. Right. Like I'm not a hugger. I mean, I'm standing there when you come up to me, I'm like this, like, unless I know you watch out for my (laughs) purple face. But, but when we connect, like, like personal connection is so important. And I, and that is going to, I, I do feel that that's what's kind of. It's going to gonna... be the saving grace in, in the mm-hmm. period of time that we're in, in, in what's coming. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's why I sign everything off piece of and peanut butter, peanut butter. You know, you and I have, have spoken about it. It's peanut butter was it's my. special. Yeah, it was, it's my code word for safety because it got me through uh, a time of my life when I had no money and I to afford to be able to eat, uh, when I had gone and tried to do something that was very hard and I didn't have any support and I had to figure it all out on my own. And I'm like, well, mm-hmm. okay. It, the global financial crash, crash had just happened and I... You know, I didn't think about, I didn't connect those two things until just now, that it was the last GFC and peanut butter was the thing that kind of really grounded me during that time. And I think that for people who own coffee small businesses, find a way to find the consumer who's looking for your product and help them get through this time with that. And the producer and the, you know, all of that, right? Like I, I welcome and I love to talk to new green buyers who are considering, you know, looking for something a different, you know, like I love those conversations, but I, but we're about a partnership and a relationship and working together and making sure that our coffee is the right coffee for your consumer. Yeah. 
and and for your cafe and um you know that's how you solve problems that's how you solve problems. And when things get rough, you know, we've got, we've got another business, another coffee producer here that we're able to, I mean, with open arms, your roasters down, fine. Bring me, come bring your coffee. Let me set you up a spot at my roaster and roast away. Right. Like beautiful, like find those people. Right. Yep. And when you have a rough day, that you can call and be like, Oh shit, that milk went all over the cafe, you know? Yep. So what? Find it those is people. What it Find is. the leads, right? Like how many calls and the abbeys. Do you yep. And the abbeys. Say, uh, yeah. So on that love bomb fest, this is the <laughs> <laughs> really like I cried. I cried. <laughs> It's the end of the year. We're all very emotional and it's all very exhausting. This has been a, an intense year. I mean, and, you know, next year, we all know next year is going to be filled with a lot of needing to be, I think in America you call white knuckling it. Is that what you Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, next, yeah. next year is going to be all about white knuckling it. And so yeah. um, I think we're all getting getting a bit ready for that. And yeah. when you can see a tsunami coming, like what's coming, it's like, okay, I need to figure <clears> out who are my people during that time because I'm not going to be able to help everybody and everybody's not going to be able to help me. So who are my people and who are not my people? And let's just hope that the people who aren't in my group have found their people. And so thank you for being one of my people. Uh, it's an honor and I value it very much. And um I really look forward to 2023. I think we're going to do With some you. extraordinary shit. I, yeah. And likewise. And I know that I've said this before. I just, our industry is better because of people like you. And, Thank you. and I, I. Likewise. Likewise. So uh, I, it, working with people like you gives me a lot of hope about the future of our industry because your, your giving of your, uh, like your knowledge and your heart and your intention. And oftentimes people get suspicious of that. People get suspicious mm. of open-hearted people and generous people. Folks, Abby is not one of the people you should be suspicious of. <laughs> like she's the real deal. So if you're in Hawaii, go f- visit Monarch Coffee uh, if you're looking for new green coffee, give Abby a call. All the links will be in the show notes below. And if you're a producer that's trying to figure out how to go direct to consumer, oh, pick up the totally phone and call, call Abby. Like I would love to see more producers all over the world going direct to consumer. It would be amazing. Amazing. Anyway, go ahead. What were you going to say? I don't have all the answers, but, you know, I can share what didn't work. And I can share what's works and I can be an ear and an encourager and. And don't yeah. be shy. People don't be shy. No. I promise you she's so approachable. Do it. <laughs> I'm going to get you to sign off this episode. Oh my gosh. Go ahead. Peace on peanut butter. You guys have a super great week. Bye everyone. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.